Well, the basic trick was that we had it reversed last time. We want to check and see if element is less than or equal to this element, not the other way around. And now when we run it, we find the right answer. Here I'm making a significantly bigger tree as a kind of a final test case. We start out with an empty tree, but then we add 8, 6, 7, 5, 3, 0, 9, and then also pi, 3.141592653535. And for each one of those, we insert it into T1 and assign the result back to T1. So at the end of the day, T1 should have all of these. When we go print it out, they should be in order if our tree is working correctly. We should have gotten each one and they should be in order. Let's go see if that works. Ah, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, excellent. This is a pretty good test case for us because it's long and it also has some duplicates, a bunch of duplicate numbers to make sure we're handling less than or equal to or whatnot correctly. So now we have much more confidence in our tree insertion. When we were looking to see if our tree contained something, whenever we were looking something up in the tree, we could throw away half the tree from consideration at each step. If our target number was less, we could throw away the right tree conceptually. We just forget about it for a while. This means that even if the tree is very large, we don't have to make very many recursive calls. That makes this tree a very efficient data structure. And in fact, one way for Python to implement things like dictionaries is using just this sort of tree.